Peggy 16. Iron Harvest is an alternative take on the history of the 1920s. Taking inspiration from this time of industrial change, Iron Harvest's fictional states and characters find themselves in the aftermath of the Great War. Huge diesel-fueled machines invented to serve humanity have only lifted warfare to another level, and mankind has had to realize that the war that was supposed to end all wars has ended nothing. The Rusfiat Empire, ruled by Tsar Nikolai, is a huge nation far beyond its zenith. Social injustice has created rising tensions between the different classes, and the Great War nearly tipped the country into chaos and revolution. Only the ongoing conflict with their neighbors Polania and Saxony is keeping the kingdom from falling apart. Some say that there are hidden powers trying to keep the conflict burning. The Rusfiat philosophy of mech construction is to forge metal monsters. Neither aiming for superior speed nor technology, but instead drawing from the rich resources of their giant empire to force their opponents to their knees. But that method of wasteful construction is getting more and more problematic, as the rivalry for these rare goods is one of the reasons for the conflict itself. The SHM-69 SERP best illustrates Rusfiat's philosophy. With heavy armor like this, it's easy to bring knives to a gunfight. It's a blood-curdling sound when these huge sickles crash into each other. Yes, it's slow, and yes, it might take several hits until it comes into striking range, but when that happens, the opponents mostly regret having chosen to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. With one heavy stroke, the sickles cut through steel like butter, and it accepts no obstacle in its way. The SHM-60 Grozer is the polar opposite. The preferred shock trooper of the Tsar is the fastest Rusfiat unit. Even more, with its rocket jump ability, it is one of the most mobile units in the game, and always good for a bad surprise. Especially when calling in their airborne brothers out of the blue. Fast in or fast out, these weakly armored exoskeletons are a problem for everyone without battlefield awareness. But enough about melee units. For the SHM-68 Nakavalnya, only a distant target is a good target. It is basically a rocket phalanx on two huge wheels. Its salvo covers a huge area with a lethal hailstorm of rockets. It needs precision when you can fire dozens of rockets within seconds. Unfortunately, the Nakavalnya is very slow and vulnerable if the enemy gets close. So it's best if they operate in the back line, well guarded by their comrades. Olga Morozova is a Rusfiat operative working tirelessly to protect the Tsar and Mother Rusfiat from internal and external threats. On the back of her Siberian tiger, Changa, she is able to quickly get behind enemy lines and take out critical targets in silence. She is a stealthy and deadly unit that can wreak havoc among infantry up close with her blade and with her MP in mid-range. And she has even more tricks up her sleeve. If Olga is around, no one should feel safe. The Rusfiat army is suffering from great losses. Many men have died in the ongoing skirmishes, and the Rusfiat people are starting to question the motives of that conflict. Long live the Tsar is still echoing in the streets, but dissatisfaction is growing among the people now that the outside threat is becoming more and more eliminated.